What's up guys, welcome to Live at Five. Uh, today we're gonna go over bag work and getting you guys rotating and moving um, without moving your feet so much. So that's probably the great thing about bag, bags that don't get utilized is the fact that they stay, they stay in place. And so we're able to keep our legs planted and just move our, move our head off the center line and swing and hit our target and get reps in of uh, uh, feeling something, what it's like making contact Instead of just coming in, putting on the gloves, wanting to spar, and then just scramble around trying to hit targets that are moving, but we can't. Even, we don't. We don't have repetitions of hitting a target that's you know standing still. In the shadows when no one's looking. So, hitting these things will correct your posture. You'll figure out. Oh, okay. My body feels a lot harder when. You know, I punch in my frame like this, or if I'm, my shoulders a little bit, or my elbows are higher, or my back foot's on the ball of my foot, or I need to commit to my turn more. You know what I mean? And so bag work kind of lets you come in and fine tune, um, so to say, the, the the machine. You know what I mean? So we'll go uh, a couple of different uh, combos that make you pull your head off the center line. So whenever you guys are coming in using these bags or a heavy bag on your own at home, kind of like. Use this stitching, or you guys can put like a, a square or a, a rectangle even that goes down. And it's about that, that that wide, maybe even a little less, about the lane that you want to make sure you get your chin off of. This is a little bit wider, so it kind of exaggerate the motion for the repetitions on the bags. So try to get your head off, off the center line um, on the left and right hand side when you do your slips, or even when you punch. If I'm standing up, I'm squared up this way. When I punch, I want my head to sit off to that side, even when I jab, right? My head doesn't stay squared up here. I'm not just going like this, right? And especially if I go jab to the body, I don't want my head just staying in that lane, right? The longer my head stays in this lane, it doesn't matter if it's going forward and back or even up and down. That's a dangerous place to be, you know what I mean? So I want my head to move. I don't really want to TikTok it like this. That's kind of like my spine is in a compromised position. I want to kind of slip side to side, point my shoulders. As I point my shoulders, my head kind of pulls. Right? It's a bogan drawn back. You're kind of drawing every time you come back. It's a full draw. Right? So, and then some, I mean, some of them can go side to side, just kind of bending your knees. So you're sitting your weight down in your legs. So off that spring, you can rip and explode and torque up. You know what I mean? But uh, the main thing is pulling the head off that center line. This, when you jab, this hand is up high. Some guys can bait you into firing and jab. They might be throwing a big kick. So a lot of the times, all you have is your, your posture where your hand is at. You won't have time to commit to throwing a jab. Oh, to see him throw the kick. Okay, to tell my arm to get up and then pull it up. And that whole time you're racing, trying to beat this leg up. You know what I mean? You have to have this hand already in place. So that's why posture is so key and having your hands come back to, the, to a good high guard while you're punching. That's all stuff you can implement and practice while you guys shadow box. Is pulling that thumb back of that eyebrow, straight back. Because these are your shields. These are what you're going to have up. And you want to have these up ready to block. And again, to catch shots last moment, you might be throwing a hook and that guy's throwing a hook. At the same time, you're just done repetitions in the back and having this hand up. So this hand is already here. So a lot of times that hand will hit. You wouldn't even have to. Because you're not going to have time to process in the middle of a, an exchange or a firefight and you go throw a punch and you see this guy winding up, oh shit, I gotta come back and block this and do this here. You're not gonna be able to time to process and do all that. So your hands and your posture have to already be programmed to be in a good uh, place and position. And bag work and shadow boxing are the best drills to do that, to, to fine tune that and make it better. So if that's something you're trying to get better is your form and technique, then come and hit the bags and get your shadow, shadow boxing in. There's not really any shortcuts to it. You know what I mean? If you just want to lift weights and spar, you're not going to get better that much faster. You have to work on the technique side of things. But and the same concept goes for your right right side. Right, when I find my right cross, I want my head to kind of slip outside this lane. I don't want to leave my head inside this exchange this way. Some guys have like different styles of, of crossing. Some of them will do taller crosses coming in, or some of them will even do that flow cross this way and fire with it. You know, Eddie Alvarez is a good one, or you can slip, you know, send your cock back this way, you look for a big hook, or jump in across the body. Or that one, that touch and move. 
But again, it's the head is coming off that center line, right? You never want to come forward in a straight line this way. So that's like the main thing, I think, first and foremost, when it comes to the movement, where you should be when you punch and uh, how far away you should get out of that pocket. So again, this is why we've done the drills. Uh, we have on the mats with that athletic tape where you guys make that rectangle so you guys kind of see the, the simulation. It's about, I don't know, maybe eight inches wide, you know, shoulder to shoulder kind of. It doesn't even have to be a foot. That's too much because you're really kind of moving your head too much. And just like, it's just about to get your, think about getting your chin like a fist length over on both sides. You know what I mean? So, and think about that while you're shadow boxing. You can do it in front of the mirror. You can do it at a park. You can do it on a bag. You can do it while you're moving around with your partner. Just on your own, getting those reps in. You know what I mean? And start moving your feet, going up and down. Working on more committed ones. Right, then you guys can start skipping. But constantly just in this little wave right here, slipping side to side. Whenever we rest and stop and kind of wait for a fire fight, we become more like one dimensional. You know, I'm trying to give this guy more movement, more planes of movement, more dimensions. We stand there and, okay, this guy going to hit me? Am I going to hit him? We'll, we'll wait, wait for this, this, you know, fire and re fire and receive game. It's uh, a lot of guys go to it instinctively. A lot of guys want to, they're not, want to show that we're not afraid of, of a firefight. And I think it's, uh, I think I'd be, it's about playing chess, you know what I mean, not checkers. And, you want to be a little bit more intelligent. Maybe bait your opponent into making you think you're going to play that game, you know what I mean? But then start adding that movement right away or slip, slip, and then come in or slip into a body kick and completely change up the frequency of where you meant to draw them in at. And uh, this head movement's a great reset for any, that, that last rose fight, if you guys saw that with, uh, you know, her opponent Andrade moved, did such a good job of moving her head side to side the entire fight, like even, in that third round, she was still slipping. And that's something that was drilled in her camp. They did that over and over, got, got her just moving her shoulders side to side, moving. And that's it, it's a trick, it's a trick. You have to, you have to practice, you have to shadow box that. We've done drills like that, where you're slipping your head while you move. Right, standing, standing still, moving your head side to side is one thing, and now moving your feet as well, and also slipping, right? So once to hold up, love is another dimension of movement. Same thing when you hit a bag or a target. If I'm making contact here, it's a lot different. Hitting the bag is trying to get away from me and move. I'm just not holding it. I gotta move with that bag and adjust. Okay, so some basic combos right now, you're, you can just go one, two. Right, I'm gonna go jab high. My head slips off to the lead side and then cross low. I can just go jab, cross. Make sure that my head slips out to the side. I'm going to the body, my head's going down low. I'm kind of sitting my head to this, to this knee. So my head's gonna go across and then down. Right, I'm second number seven. Slip to the side of the jab, and then come down the hook. Right here, here. I'm not just keeping my head in a straight line, worrying about getting my knuckles to the target. Right, turn my frame, turn my frame. Right now, from this posture, there's two ways I can come back up. I can come up with this elbow high, big looping, tall loop, looping hook to the head. Right, just bring my top, my my posture nice and tall. Or I can dig up underneath on this uppercut and come up underneath this way. I personally like the uppercut coming up underneath. I feel like you hit the guy's gloves and knock his gloves kind of back into him and also create space between you and him, right? He goes back and then you, you can come forward. So off that uppercut, he goes back. I can step forward for the trip the leg kick. Um, he goes up, I can come back up, meet him back upstairs to the cross. I can go uh, overhand. I can knock his hands up. I can go across the body. I come back low. So uh, when you're doing that, that uppercut, there's other two little details. So that number seven, right? My head to the side and then down the cross. That hook, my head comes up and back across in that lane. See, so if I'm going jab, cross, hook, my head's going like a number seven and then back up and through. All right? So if I do that body shot, my, head, my head's going to do that seven, a jab, slip, but this body shot on my head to stay outside this lane from the body shot here. All right? If I do the uppercut, then my head kind of comes back up across that lane. All right? The body shot, I don't really want my head to come across this way. I want my head to slip. So I'm kind of just going that down to that seven and your head stays at the bottom for that body shot. One, two, body. Or that uppercut, one, two, 
the uppercut you can raise up with it because you're firing a strike and there's a, it's the, the barrier between you and, and uh, your opponent. So the uppercut's kind of like a, a throw to bring you back up that middle guard ready to throw. But it's always good to throw something off that lead uppercut because if you can touch him with it, then that means you can touch him with a sec secondary weapon. You know, so uh, I think it's a great maneuver to run on, on south, soft paw guys to orthodox and orthodox guys and south paws as well. As well, let's you close that pocket, close that range. If I'm starting off, let's me close this open stance here. And my head slips off to the side. One, two, stay on the outside and we'll chase him here. McGregor does a good job of it. You see that lead uppercut, big, big uh, left cross while the guys float off and gets, get out to the outside. It's a good angle to cut for setting up for a big body kick too as well. So now that we've got our head moving, we can go jab cross. Uh, we can go back to a slip on the other side, right? And we can add a roll. So we can go one, two, my head slipping, making that seven. Or if I just go two straight shots, my head just loops side to side. Jab cross, and then slip, roll. Or I can just go one, two, slip, slip. I like the reps better on the back with the slips. So I feel like you can wind up better. And I don't like this motion too much for MMA and kickboxing. You don't want to get caught down here in this realm. If guys are doing footage on you or if they're sparring with you and they see you spending a lot of time down here and that's when your reaction is a slip one and the duck one, they're going to pick that up and go, okay, I just know I got to go throw a, a cross and then a knee, you know, or a jab and a knee and this guy's going to slip and duck right into it and they kind of bait you. So like the slips kind of hold you accountable and lets you be upright in your stance more. Slip, slip, as opposed to slip, roll underneath puts you in the fire zone a little bit. Well, let's do those two different uh, variables off that jab cross, slip, slip, or jab cross, slip, roll. I can also fire that jab uppercut as a setup. So jab, uppercut, slip, slip, jab, uppercut, slip, roll. After that roll, I can add two more shots. I can go left hook, right hook, and see how my head's slipping the entire time through this whole combo. I'm going jab, cross, slip, slip, left hook, right hook. Look at myself in the mirror behind on each side every time I slip. So my head's really trying to clear this lane. I'm kind of looking down this way. And that's what these bags have to help you to do is to move your frame and get as much torque as possible without moving your feet. Hitting tie pads and focus mitts is a little bit different. You're changing up the tools out of the toolkit to work on the machine. It's more for accuracy, more for movement, catching up. These are frame builders, these power bags, especially these ones that are drilled to the post and don't move. These ones you get the best work because it's like having a partner that's kind of holding the bag for you the whole time. You know what I mean? So uh, that's probably the best combination to go into having you guys fire, getting that head off that center line, right? Fire, then you can move your head going back, and coming forward, just practice that slip. And off that slip, you can fire entry with any shot you want. You can do a big explosive hook at the body with an overhand, with a body uppercut hook. Or off that slip, you can go a big lunging hook, right? I can slip, slip, three, fourth, big lunging hook this way. Or you can slip, slip, cross the body, or slip to the big uppercut. But those slips is like an offensive. It may feel like it's kind of a a sketchy movement because you're committed about bringing your head closer to your opponent. Right? I'm bringing my head to him as opposed to like pulling away and shielding. But I don't know, think about from your opponent's perspective, right? If you've got a target right here in front of you that's moving side to side, think about how kind of hard and frustrating that is to hit. Especially if, especially if I miss this target, this thing hit me back. You know, so it's a, it's a lot different than the guy can be straight in and out. I know I can kind of close my eyes. I can bait for you to throw and close my eyes and bring something over the top or get you to throw back and pull over the top. So I know your head's in that straight line, you know, so moving the head off that line is key. It's so huge, so important. And these bags allow you to do that. And you can get a partner to start moving around. Just getting a partner doing simple jabs and having a guy slip or cross and have him slip or one, two, and have them slip, slip, or slip, roll. And just doing that back and forth for hours, that can help build your, it's your nervous system you have to program on that stuff. Your eyes have to see it. It's like playing catch, 
you know, or hitting a baseball for the first time, it's all nervous system stuff. You just have to literally, a coach can teach you and tell you all you want, but you got to get out there and actually do the, do the motions, do the movement, and the human body and everything, it'll, it'll pick it up and learn on its own. So, again, these bags have to be utilized. I'm just trying to give you guys a bunch of tools and different drills to do uh, at home if you guys have bags that are similar to this, or, you know, once this thing gets lifted, you guys are in and want to do extra credit on your own and build your guys' uh, framework is the most important thing. Before you can even hit hard, you have to have a good frame, a good posture, a good balance. You know what I mean? You're not going to go out, uh, you know, imagine like the fighting out on two planks of wood. You got to be pretty sturdy. Right? You're not going to fall off. So posture before everything, just like the position before submission and grappling, like it's also like the same, that posture before like striking. It's the same concept. You always want to be in a good solid frame. And moving like this is, is very threatening when it's pulling your head off this center line. So even just coming, jumping rope and moving like this side to side, I keep that back leg on the ball of my foot like a spring, right? So even though my leg is heavy, heavy while I do this, I can still sit back. I just pull my heel down. That's going to signal me going back to block or check. But if I'm here forward, I'm not just standing planted on it. My back leg's on the ball of my foot, it's engaged and I'm slipping purposely. Because off this slip, I could explode forward and rip with anything I want at any time. Left, right. The second I see a chink in his armor, if I see him breathe, if I see him blink or put anything out, and I know, okay, I just saw it, here I go. As soon as I slip, I'm gonna fire. But you have to be in that posture already. Um, so you can start adding the numbers like that too. So we can go jab, and then we can go slip, slip, right? Now it heads back on the other side. So I can go jab high, jab low, and then slip, slip, and then attack here, up the hook. Uh, and then I can go slip, slip again, right? Or one slip, and then hook, kick. So you can start adding slips into whatever combo. Just say a combination is a jab, cross, hook, leg kick which is a pretty significant combination. You're gonna use that a lot in kickboxing. Probably the most common setup you guys see is that jab sits up the cross, the cross sits up that big hook, and that big hook is the center for that late kick, right? So especially that Dutch style fighting, they're trying to get the guy's guard high, and get them to cover up, shield up, so you can attack him low. So this jab up the cross hook kind of pushes his gloves and his guard, gets him shielding up this way, so you can come down and chop that leg. So we'll split that same combination up, super simple, jab, cross, hook, kick, and we'll add in like, you know, three slips or whatever. So I'll start off going, uh, I'll go jab, slip, slip. Jab, slip, slip, and then we'll go cross hook, and then slip, slip, kick. The jab, the jab low, slip, slip, cross, hook, slip, slip, kick. So imagine the opponent firing back at you as well. I hit him with a jab, I slip, fire back. I'm gonna come back at him, he's gonna fire back, I'm gonna slip and I'm stepping in and kick. And that's kind of like a little short sequence of like live action sparring, you know, live action bag work. So instead of just standing in front of the bag and throwing it off kind of Robotic simulated combinations, there's, there's, there's tempo, there's timing, there's pauses between them all. You know, and there's any, any infinite of ranges that can happen with all those combos, especially in MMA, there's so many variables. So practicing all those different ranges and frequencies is key. And there's no way to shortcut that. You just gotta come in the bag and get it done, right? Or you can go jab, cross, slip, slip, and the hook, slip. Anything where you're just taking your head off that center line, you can go jab, uppercut, slip, slip. Just after practice, after whatever, doesn't matter how exhausted you are, you guys can just go through the warm up. Just start going through these movements where you're in front of the back. You guys are just able to move. You can do elbows as well, right? Setting up that back elbow. Um, I like that lead uppercut, but again, it jams the guy's guard. It jams his hand, getting his hands up. So we can go that jab high, that cross down low, that lead uppercut, 
and then step forward that tomahawk or that axe down over the top. It doesn't have to be a big, huge circular motion. It just take like a like a little arch, right? It's coming over the top, landing right about on the hairline this way. And the guy picks his head up. It's, it's like a thing, literally like a tomahawk axe going right over the top. So even if the guy goes to cover his head, it's going right dead center. So think about, I say that thing about wheels on a train, right? It's going like this, so that same motion. I'm sure a lot of you guys have hit that tire with a, a sledgehammer, right? The same kind of motion, it's circular over the top this way. So it's gonna go jab across, a lead uppercut, and step forward with the elbow over the top. So again, you attack high, go low. It's gonna get him to drop his frame just a little bit. Go ahead and pick him up with the uppercut, lifting him up. And now I'm gonna upward frame, and now I'm just gonna step forward heavy after I, lift, after I come up as well. So again, start high, go low, come back up high, and then forward. Again, it's a, a more of a clashing. You guys are gonna make contact here. You may block it, you might have to clinch it up, you may fall, may need to fall to the knee. You can add another elbow behind it. You might knock you through in the midst, you might have to recover with the sitting elbow. So just make sure your balance, your posture is there as you come up. That's why I like that lead uppercut because it fixes your frame. It doesn't matter if I just threw a big uh, shot on my right side and I went off balance right after I missed. Upper committed or I'm firing that uppercut, pulls me back up dead center. I heard that hook does as well, but it's got my momentum connecting back that way. So there's a chance, depending on how pissed off or how much power I put into it, I might rip one of these back and miss and overshoot it. So the uppercut, it's more of an upward motion, pulling me upright, as opposed to the hook where I'm twisting and pulling, pulling my weight across. Um, so just keep that in mind whenever one in doubt, you know what I mean? When in doubt, lead up or cut it out, and that'll get get your posture back up. You know, you know, pull your pull your shot up to finish or whatever. You're pulling it up to shield, or pulling it up to get away, or pull slip, cover hook cross. But that upright is it's like having a big shield. You know, you're getting up off the ground. Wow, we're going again. A lot of guys think punch blindly, especially in those exchanges, and they'll throw a big blind hook. Um, but again, those are all punches and all reps you guys can work on these backs that aren't moving around. They're, it's like a bench press for bodybuilders. They just, these things never get used. But um, and there's different uh, slips and movements you guys can do off of your left hand as well. Once you guys get comfortable moving your head side to side and you guys done a, two different variables you felt like, now we can also move off our left hand. So I can go jab, I can go jab cross to start. So jab cross and then jab and I, as he enters back, usually if I hit a jab cross on someone and I jab him again, there's three unanswered punches. Usually this guy's gonna try to score and get me back. So as he comes in the score, boom, I'm slipping off to the side here. I'm in the stance, coiled up, ready to go. He's committed coming forward. So now it's only a split second where he sees me cut this angle before he squares up and then we're squared up, we're squared up back at, at, at uh, square one again. So I gotta slip off to the side, boom. And I'm stuck here now, I need to take advantage of this little angle this way. This guy's caught this way, or he might have thrown something here, I'm coming off to the side, or he threw a shot here and getting off to the side. I wanna be able to get something through this alleyway right here, right through his guard, or something up underneath. So again, we'll go jab cross, and jab, and then think about an opponent coming forward, attacking, and you just slip off to that side, pull that shoulder back. Right here, we can come up underneath, up and go across, then go across, then you go up, uh, hook elbow, then you go uppercut elbow, then you go uppercut knee, then you step off to that side, uppercut leg kick. So, again, the tricky part is you're slipping off that side and landing in that springing stance. So, again, we'll go jab cross, move around, jab, get him to respond, then slip. So right from the center lane, you're just gonna hop up off your stance and you're gonna land in your, in your stance with your shoulder coiled back ready to go. So your legs are spring loaded right here. You know what I mean? So you go from this 12 o'clock stance 
We fire that jab cross back to your frame. Power jab, kind of demand dominance. Right, you free shot, tries to score back, feels momentum losing. You pull up, you slip, and you're off this side. You look like heavy hook to bring your posture back up tall to that leg kick. You get worked on the middle, that uppercut. Kick. You slip off, uppercut, uppercut cross, uppercut elbow, depending on the height of your opponent. Right. You slip off to the sides, maybe go uppercut, switch knee. You can slip off to the side and go right to the knee if you want. It's a pretty athletic movement. Or you slip off here, right into the switch kick. You can just getting that angle with friends or a pad where you can simulate a guy shooting as well, coming forward, right? And then with a jab uppercut and move back. He feels threatened, jab again. The crowd's kind of cheering, and he gets to one. Back, slip off to this. Just this little angle is enough to stifle a guy. If a guy's shooting, boom, he's, I just got out of the way. The guy's throwing a jab, boom, I just got out of the way. So there's a second there, he's gonna have to see me recover, get back and then square up. And the whole time I'm just gonna land and pull the trigger, boom. So you need reps and kind of just moving your feet. So again, jab uppercut, I can go push kick, knee, whatever you think will piss a guy off and get him to come forward. As he comes forward, slip off to that side. Probably just two shots is good. Once you slip off to that side, just getting up to like two, two finishing shots. Hit here, up our cut slip hook. I like this back, it gives you the different angles you guys can hit. Different muscles, you know, doing a repetition here is a lot different from coming up. It's a lot different from over the top. Because you're working your shoulder, your back, your hip differently. So try to get reps of it, you know. Being as creative as possible when you guys are even doing your bag work. And then we can also slip off to the other side, off the right hand. All right, so if I just go, you know, jab, jab, cross. I want to get this guy to respond off this cross hand. If he wants to respond right away and attack, I can slip off to the side here. All right, just move my feet to the side just like that. Allows me to pull my head here. Boom, and still be engaged. I'm just in an opposite stance. Right? Um, without pulling to the side and going here, oh, my head's way out to the side. You know, everyone has different styles. Um, right now, these drills are just to get you guys to move your feet. Right? We're gonna go here, here, off this right committed shot, and you're slipping to the side here. Yep, your feet are just gonna be opposite while you guys move. And then once you fire your right hand again, it's actually gonna correct your stance. All right, so it's gonna, gonna go one, two, he decides to come forward. I slip off that side here. I'm late. My legs are spring loaded. Right? I just went from facing 12 o'clock. I move. Boom. My toes are here. And now when I fire this right hand shot, my frame's going to turn into that bag. And I'm back to my right stance. Now I'm engaged. Right? I'm off on that little side. So, again, different mechanics. Going from that side to this side. When we get off the left hand, you almost jump right into it. Boom. You kind of land into that spring. Right, you land, cock, ready to go. The other side, you kind of got to jump over, boom, and then throw it and adjust your hips back. So it's two different concepts. Again, so the right side. Um, it's a good drill to go right hand step, right hand lead. So you're gonna fin hit him with the right side, and then pull off, and you, now your right side's loaded again. I'm gonna go double right hand. I still got my thumb busted pretty bad, so I can't really hit too hard with my right hand. Um, and stepping off here allows you to coil for a big power shot. Whether it's a big rear uppercut, a big hook over the top, a big hook to the body, right? Crash, crash, heavy. I like finishing with a heavy outside leg kick out of habit. I think uh, it's just like a shotgun blast at the end of every combination. You know, having a guy do with your shin. Out of your head safe. You got a good lay lay kick from your head's off to the side over here. You don't got to worry about getting kids. So 
you just got to commit to it and turn your hip. And the more you pivot that foot, you turn your hip, your head's allowed to pull to the side. If I don't turn this hip, my foot stays flat. I kind of just swing your legs. Then my head kind of stays in this lane. Right? I kind of stay upright. I'm not able to turn my head off to the side more. So pivoting that foot, just committing to the kick more, allows you to pull your head off to the side. And then it's the frame, the position, right? Allows you, here I'm not really moving my foot. Right? I'm pretty much upright. I'm not really moving too much out of that lane. I kind of stay here. And watch when I pivot my foot. See, I'm going from like here to here. Small little detail, but if I didn't get to give me detail, I'm stepping, my head's going, and then pivoting back. I suppose it's just staying planted and swinging my leg up. You know what I mean? It's a matter of inches, but fighting's a game of inches, especially with those little gloves, those little pockets, the little avenues guys have to hit and don't get hit. So now we can mix that up a little bit. We can go uh, jab, cross, hook, step off to that side, and go hook, cross, back to the other side, upper foot, hook, cross. Not gonna be a wrap, so I went there and back. Again, you can go jab, jab, cross, hook, high. I can go a jab, cross, body shot. Then off to the left side. I just went forward, I threw that stance. Upper cut, cross. I just cross this pin to the back, just get the repetition in. Then upper cut, hook, leg kick. That's a good repetition, uh, a sequence to fire without a partner eyes uh, hitting it back. It's forcing you to go. There and back, so again, jab, cross, hook. And again, sit your weight down and your legs on that hook. Try sitting your weight, don't come up too tall. You know, sit your weight down so you're getting better reps. You got like an army tank, right? The base is super low, the turret is on top. That turret doesn't really move when that tank fires. If the turret is to move, the tank's gonna kind of fall forward and back, side to side, so you know, the turret has to stay right on top of that base, heavy base. So the stronger base you guys have with your legs, the stronger power you guys have on top to throw. You know, so hold yourself accountable for having a strong base, strong legs, and these bags allow you to come in here and, and practice that. Again, so jab, cross, hook, slip off to that side, and I'm off of the angle. I can go hook, uppercut, and come back. Keep the uppercut, that slip. Back. You guys kind of mix it up, play it how you want. On that one, I want to jab, cross, knee uppercut, step off to the side, hook, rear uppercut, step off, overhand, knee uppercut, kick. Body. I really like that uh, jab uppercut, and that body shot. The rear uppercut kind of gets the guy's hands lifted. Gets him backing up, punch him up this way. He has to deal with the uppercut here, or he has to back up and get out of the way. So shoveling that jab and that rear uppercut through his guard is gonna make him block, make him deal with it. And when he does, boom, he's leaving his body open and exposed for you to rip a strong, heavy hook. So the rear up, the rear, it's like a pick-me-up, you know, uppercut that's a lift him, committed to it, committed to his lift. Or at least back if he goes back up too far, you can you can dig out and dodge it. You know what I mean? But if you get a good, solid club on his gloves or his forearms, when you throw that, that right upper, can you feel it here? Boom. You're going to just twist and rip that, rip that body off that. All right, so we can go to the other side as well. So you can start off going uh, jab, uppercut, and slip off here, right? Overhand hook, and then slipping back. Jab, cross, step off to the side, overhand, step back. You guys have a partner, you guys have like a weighted belt or a, a body a body shield belt and like a, a medicine ball. Um, you guys can put the medicine ball on top. 
and hold the shield, kind of just walk around. And it'll be like a big uh, sphere, you know, uh, the target for your par partner to hit. And you can move around, walk, go forward, go back, and have the puncher just throwing all these shots, flipping, moving around, staying with you, and just following you around, you know, following your footwork pattern and, and all that. But as far as coming to hitting a bag uh, without a partner, I think probably this and these water bags right here are the best ones because they're heavy, right? So it's a hitting body, especially a man that's want, that's wants to stay in front of you, right? And wants his money and he's fighting for it. So you're gonna have to hit a force. And so hitting these heavy bags, these water, right, these water bags, they allow you to feel what it feels like hitting the body. You know what I mean? So even having a partner hold on to these body bags is huge. I think that builds. You know, some uh, even an old concept of that old Rocky, you know, is uh, all taped up in the, the bodies in the freezer and, and, and the meat truck. That feel of hitting that body, hitting bone, hitting muscle tissue, there's something, uh, you know, I'm not primal about that. And so these bags allow you to come in there and be prime. You can't really just expect to be all crafty and, and talented and, and good and, and not practice and not you know, put that blade to the fire. You gotta test your metal. And before you can go sparring and go live, you gotta come in here and put your throat, your sword through the fire. Make sure you're punching, you're slipping. Make sure you're slipping with intent. You're not just slipping because you're throwing wild shots and missing this way. You got your, your head above your hips, you're moving this way, right? Super, super important. These bags allow you guys to kind of, they hold you accountable for that. All right, so one more time, we're gonna run through that. We're gonna go, uh, we'll go back the other way. So I can go jab cross and slip off to this side first, right? And then uppercut, hook, or I can go uppercut, elbow, right? And then slip, slip. Jab cross. I can finish off on this side, or I can go jab cross, slip to this side, fire whatever you want, off this hook, come back to the other side again. As you guys see, I'm just working little angles. I'm just going from right in the middle to over about one o'clock, to back to the middle to 11 o'clock. Right? Just kind of three dials on the clock. I'm not going too much. I'm not going like nine to three. I'm starting off 12. I fire that right hand, boom. I sit off like one number on the clock from right here. I'm just firing off to the side. So again, that's simulating my partner just here and coming forward. Right? He's coming forward and I'm getting off to the side. I probably have a second to fire on him before he turns up, he squares up, and we're fighting again here. That's him firing an attack, whether it be a push kick or a jab uppercut. He goes to respond, and as he responds, to step in, and boom, you're out to the side. And you're getting one over on me here, fire before I square up. So that after you fire over, there should be power shots, at least on the Debbie back here, drilling, getting those shots, getting those reps, and learning to fire hard, and pull the trigger, and uh, I think doing sprints, short sprints coming out off the line help uh, condition the body for that as far as pulling the trigger going from zero to 100 as fast as possible. Just getting on the line of a race, boom, stepping off and taking 10 power steps as hard as you can, and eight power steps and then six power steps, you know, 10 times after every freaking workout. That kind of programs the lungs to fire, pull the trigger. A lot of these MMA guys and Guys just in the pocket, they're kind of tentative, they don't really trust themselves. You know, they're confident in everything. It's just questioning when, when, when it's out there under the lights and they kind of frame it and they hesitate too long and the opponent gets one off first. And man, if they would have just believed in themselves, themselves and just pulled the trigger and throw one when they had intention to, it might have, you know, the cards may have felt differently. And so um, having that kind of confidence, knowing when to pull the trigger right when you mean to, with no hesitation, and uh, these bag drills allow you to kind of build that confidence. And I'm telling you, when you break it down and, and do the extra credit on your own, you know, come into the bag classes, learn combinations that you can do on your own or with partners. And then just make sure you're getting the work out there. Find a, you can't have a bag at home, go to the bar, park, hit a tree, you know, put your put your, uh, um, your wraps and some duct tape over it. Or some shin pads even too. Just get out there, start hitting a tree, start moving around and just get used to your frame. Keep boxing all about having a big, having a frame and, and how to get used to your frame. Knowing the length of your shots, the length of your reach, right? the length of your kicks, your head position when you, when you punch, you, does your head move, right? all these little details. So you can get out there and just hit a tree even, 
if you're serious enough about it. There's always always ways to build and get better. You know what I mean? And, uh, man, hopefully we've done enough of these series to give you guys a lot of at home, you know, extra credit stuff you guys can do as far as building yourselves up. And um, when we come back in, um, we'll be going over, over a lot of this stuff as well. We got more bags in here, a lot more open space to do more uh, hands-on drilling, more some controlled sparring. So the, the setting's a lot more, gives us a lot more room for, for more, more, more violent, fun activities, right? We got these guys, so I can literally split half the class doing bag work here and then open sparring in the out and then switch back and forth. So it's a lot more efficient for you guys. We'll have a lot more fun once the doors get lifted and get, you guys are gonna come back in here. And um, so we're looking forward for having you. That's enough for today. Um, we'll see you guys Thursday for the next Live at Five. Thanks for joining us.